Every winter for the past decade, the Baseball Writers Association of America has weighed the Hall of Fame worthiness of Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens, two titans whose legacies will forever be tainted by their respective ties to performance-enhancing drug use. And every winter for the past decade, the BBWAA has collectively failed to reach the correct conclusion. Barry Bonds is arguably the greatest position player of all time. Roger Clemens is arguably the greatest pitcher of all time. And both unequivocally deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, their alleged steroid use notwithstanding. Should they fail to receive the 75% of the vote necessary for induction this time around in their final year on the Hall of Fame ballot? That's a colossal failure on the part of the writers, one that undermines the integrity of Cooperstown itself. Let's start with the obvious. Barry Bonds is arguably the greatest baseball player who ever lived, and he's unquestionably the greatest since integration. He is the single season home run king. He is the all time home run king. Among position players, he trails only Babe Ruth in all-time war. And he's got seven MVP awards. No other player in the history of the game has more than three to go along with his 14 All-Star appearances, 12 Silver Slugger awards, and eight Gold Glove awards. He's a creative player with 99 in every attribute. That slightly open stance, feet fairly close together, crowding the plate. The pitch. There's a long one to right field. Forget about it. This one is headed for New Jersey. High into the upper deck. Barry Bonds with a spectacular three run homer. Steroids, though, right? Ripped into right field. It's a one run game as Bonds gets his second of the series. You can see Salmon saying. In the dugout, that's the furthest ball I've ever seen hit. Okay, let's erase his entire body of work from 1999 onward. It wasn't until after the 1998 season, after all, that Bonds, who, like Clemens, never failed a drug test, reportedly first used steroids. Even with those last nine seasons expunged from his record, Bonds would still be a three-time MVP, the only player in history with at least 400 home runs and 400 stolen bases, and ultimately a deserving Hall of Famer after just 13 seasons. As for Clemens, a seven-time Cy Young Award winner who won 354 games over his 24-year career and racked up more wins above replacement than any other live ball era pitcher, he would also be a Hall of Famer on the merit of his pre-PED numbers. Prior to 1998, which is when Clemens reportedly first started using steroids, he had already racked up four Cy Young Awards, an AL MVP award, and a cumulative 2.97 ERA over more than 3,000 innings. That's Hall of Fame worthy. A new record. Clemens has set a major league record for strikeouts in a game. 20. Let's not whitewash history though. Bonds and Clemens are Bonds and Clemens because they kept putting up ungodly numbers into their early 40s. And yes, it was likely thanks to the help of performance enhancing drugs. But while some people feel that should keep them out of Cooperstown in perpetuity, they should not be the scapegoats for the institutional failure that was the steroid era. In the wake of the 94-95 strike, everyone with a vested interest in the financial health of the game, from Commissioner Bud Selig to the owners to the beat writers, turned a blind eye to the emergent PED epidemic. League-wide drug testing for steroids didn't start until 2003, more than a decade after they were added to MLB's banned substances list, and no big leaguer was suspended for a positive PED test until 2005. That's what a complicit system looks like. Don't take my word for it, though. That's what Senator George Mitchell said in his groundbreaking eponymous 2007 Mitchell Report, in which he also stressed that no player named in his report should be punished for their illicit drug use. 15 years later though, Bonds and Clemens are being punished in that they've been repeatedly denied this prestigious honor that they earned with their unprecedented numbers, while Bud Selig, who presided over the steroid era and tacitly encouraged it with his inaction, has a plaque hanging in Cooperstown. How was that fair? Besides, it's not like the Hall of Fame doesn't already immortalize men who took illegal drugs to enhance their performance. Hank Aaron and Willie Mays, for instance, they both admitted to taking amphetamines, or greenies as they were known, during their playing careers. Where's the outrage to kick those legends out of Cooperstown? 
And it's not like there aren't already suspected PED users in the hall either. Yvonne Rodriguez, Mike Piazza, Jeff Bagwell, all three of them were linked, however tenuously, to steroid use throughout their careers. All three of them were elected to Cooperstown in recent years. So why should only Bonds and Clemens pay the price for their suspected transgressions, which, again, were encouraged by a league that didn't meaningfully try to eradicate steroids from the game and a media that looked the other way year after year? Not voting for Bonds and Clemens is inconsistent at best and vindictive at worst. And invoking the character clause to keep out Bonds, Clemens, or any other suspected PED user is frankly laughable given the mess of deplorable men already enshrined in Cooperstown, like for instance, Tris Speaker and Cap Hansen, both of them virulent racists. And let's not forget that the Hall of Fame is officially known as the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. It's a museum, folks. And so it has a fundamental obligation to preserve the history of the game. Even the chapters, some people would prefer to forget. And you simply can't give a credible account of modern baseball history without Barry Bonds and Roger Clements. That would be a revisionist history. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.